when you don't know what you in air quotes want to do when you grow up sort of a thing, that's beautiful because when you don't know, it means you have every option is open to you. You can do anything you want. So I don't want anyone to listen and get discouraged. You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. What's up, my friends? Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. This is conversation number 86, and I'm super excited that you're here today. I'm very grateful for your time. I had an incredible guest today. I'm very honored to have the one and only Mr. Jay Alders. He's done some insane stuff in his day, and he continues to do some crazy, amazing, awesome stuff. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever talked to, and he's done album artwork for a 311, slightly stupid, just insane artwork like I've never seen before. Very unique style. I highly suggest you check check him out. Maybe you want to pause this real quick. Check out who Jay is really quick if you don't know who he is. See his artwork. See the amazing things he's doing. He's a philanthropist, a father, like I said. Crazy, awesome stuff. Had a wonderful conversation with him. You can check out this conversation and the contemplation episodes as well on ChristophLewis.com forward slash podcast. So without further ado, welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. Christoph, I'm stoked. I'm like so excited to talk to you, man. I've uh, been dipping into some of your episodes, like listening to what you're doing, checked out your site uh, when we first connected, uh, I don't know, a couple months back. Yeah. Really impressed by what you're doing, and I'm completely stoked that you're part of the new dad club. Yeah, that's a a crazy introduction. I wasn't expecting it. It's like you have such a history in the communities that you're involved with. So to hear that from you and your fellow podcaster, obviously, means a lot. So I really appreciate it. And the dad thing is super awesome. So thank you. I know you're a little bit ahead of me on that game. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's not not a race, but yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Within 18 months, so we, we had the quite quite an efficient plan that that is that is crazy i, I saw that because you have a, a set of twins and that's nuts that's you do yeah my daughter's five and a half my boys are four and uh yeah it's been it's been awesome but uh as you probably already know it's one of the harder things you can do in life the hard, one of the harder and way cooler than i ever 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 could have imagined in my entire life yeah, I really, really wish I can go back in time and tell my younger self that because I waited a while mm. to have kids and I was one sure. of these like know-it-all type people like, ah, the world's terrible. Why should I have a kid? <laughs> I'm having so much fun. I'm traveling. I'm doing these great things. And like then I then I become a dad and I'm like, oh, that's why because yeah. it's the best thing. Ever. Yeah, yeah. I was wrong. Yeah, you know? so, that, so that's like a really good point. Um, about the world that we live in today, it seems like no matter what, like the world's always perpetually going to be crazy and there's going to be psychos running around and you're like, Oh my God, do I want to bring a kid into this world? But I think that's that's the guy with like 18, uh, weapons behind him. Right. So (laughs) funny tangent. No, I got this uh, shotgun we see behind me. If you're watching on YouTube, um, my in-laws are incredible and they, I had a daughter, they bought me a shotgun for my first father's day. And I was like, obviously I married into the right family. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. cool yeah man and uh like we were saying a little bit before when we were talking about like i focus on a lot of things and you have a similar podcast in the sense of you love interviewing people and like sharing their stories and i thought that was so cool because i listened to a couple of your podcast episodes as well and i was like what you're doing is like in your own like niche and all genres is so incredible but it's really familiar to me or similar to me like i stay i interview a lot of people but i I interview a lot of military people too, obviously. So I think it's kind of cool that we stick to that. Being able to go out there and just like be like, I think one of the things you and your wife said is like, we were having these conversations and we knew these people and we wanted to capture these conversations and share them with other people. And when I heard that, like a light went off in my head and I was like, that is literally one of the reasons why I wanted to start a podcast because I like having these conversations and I, I, I wanted to learn selfishly myself so much, but I wanted to share these interviews with other people. So I thought that was so cool. Oh man, I, I, I'm just grateful that you uh, you listened. That was from our first first episode and we were kind of yeah, dragging our feet yeah. for like a few months and uh it's been really really fun and 
a ton more work than I ever thought it would be. Like yes. most things like something involved. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, yeah, only an hour a week or whatever. Big, no big deal. It turns out to be like yeah. hours of editing oh and my gosh. motion booking and That's so et cetera. Crazy. Yeah. Work, but, yeah. Uh, and, and you're, you're no stranger to that though. Cause I mean like you amongst, so you're probably, I think you also said like you were eight or nine when you, you had this uh, journal or this like early like childhood manifesto like of what you wanted to do like eight or nine years old and jay's like reading this off and he's like i knew what i wanted to do i wanted to do these things i wanted to be like an artist a philanthropist um all of these things entrepreneur you might have even said and now you've gone and fulfilled all of that and a lot of people myself included i'm 31 now not until my later 20s and shit now i'm still trying to figure out what the heck i really want to do so it's cool to see you have that like in the single digits of age and then like fulfill that and stay with it. And I can imagine like, even though we talk about career transition, I can imagine with even knowing so early on as a child, you still had like a wealth of like probably times in your life where you're like, I don't know if I can actually do the things I want to do. I mean, does anything like stand out to you like that? As far as bigger challenges along the way? Sure. Or, or something even like, even like a huge challenge where you thought there was like no way, maybe like being an artist or in doing all the things that you've done. There was an obstacle that was like, it might completely derail me and I might have to just like work a desk job for the rest of my life. Cause I don't know if I'm cut out to do it. Um, so I'll start from the beginning. So you're talking so when I was like in second or third grade, it was like one of these classic, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And yeah. I, as you described, was, I pretty much described what I'm doing now. So that's both good and bad. It's good because huh. I was very mission focused. Um, I was not even close to being in the military, but when I was a kid, I've kind of, I was sort of obsessed with like war movies and being on missions and yeah. playing in the woods. And yeah. stuff. So it was, even though I was not, I didn't serve. I had that very, I was sure. obsessed with war movies. And having a mission. So my whole life, I was very mission driven to have that, which is good. But it was also it was tough because not having a plan B um, sort of uh, derailed me probably from other possibilities. So the, mm. I wanted to comment. You said like that even you have not found what you want to do in quotes. I think that's a great thing, like mm. because when you don't know exactly what you want to do and for your, for the listeners that are hearing this, that might hear someone like myself, like, oh, great for that guy, Jay. He knew what he wanted to do when he was eight, like. <laughs> No, it's not like that. The thing is, when you don't know what you, in air quotes, want to do when you grow up sort of a thing, that's beautiful because when you don't know, it means you have every option is open to you. You can do anything you want. So I don't want anyone to listen and get discouraged. But for my personal journey, I, I sort of uh, found my target because uh, by default, I kind of sucked at everything else, you know, so I, I wasn't great at team sports. I, I was mm -hmm. drawn towards skateboarding and surfing and martial arts and breakdancing and things you could do on your own. I was uh, I am and was and always have been a smaller framed guy. So I was I didn't fit into like the tough guy thing. Yeah. So for my one superpower that kind of gave me special powers in school that gave me any sort of validation at all was art. So for me, it was, it was more natural to pursue that because that's all that gave me validation. It was all I was good at. It's what made sense to me. Um, so yeah, along the way, I didn't really have anything where I felt like, Oh, I'm going to have to fall back on another job mm -hmm. because that was never my reality. Like the idea of getting a real job in quotes for me, like getting a real job seemed like failure. And I'm not, it's not at all that because there's times now as an, as an adult with three children where I think, <laughs> I think having a real job would be like, feel like, like a vacation because I'm working so oh hard gosh. and yeah. you know, being an entrepreneur takes such grind and hustle and discipline. So I, I didn't really have a situation where I felt like I would do that because to me that equaled like ultimate failure, like, like losing my freedom and losing my ability to create my own schedule was something I never, ever put on the table. Um, that being said, it has not been easy. There's been many struggles where, you know, I'll have one month as an artist that I'm doing fantastic and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm crushing it the next month. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting crushed. Like it's very cyclical in the, in the yeah. art pursuit that I have. And I'm sure and I've heard some of your interviews where you talk to other entrepreneurs, a very common theme where yep. it's very cyclical. It's very unpredictable. And if you don't have the discipline and the courage and the balls to like stick with it, it's a very tough thing to do. I think my first biggest uh, defeat, I guess, when I first faced defeat, uh, my first college portfolio uh, 
review to get into college, I didn't get accepted. Oh, and wow. up until that point in my life, I had always been like the art kid. Oh, there's Jay, the art kid. You know? <laughs> and, uh, it was just an obvious thing. I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. I was pretty good at it. I was identified in school as being this guy that does artwork. And then I go to college and I didn't really prepare well enough because mm. I took it for granted that I was just going to float on by and I had no one else to compare myself to. And the, the person reviewing my portfolio basically said, your work is pretty good, but you lack, you know, the, the range of work that you might need and made, they made really great points. And so they said, we can let you into school, but you're going to have to earn your way to get into the art school itself, sure. which felt like a crushing blow. So I just kind of doubled down and, and prepared and, and got into a school on my next review. But um, yeah, you know, defeats wow. are never easy, but they are part of the journey and they're necessary yeah. to like look straight on. Yeah, I think that's really interesting how you explain all the way from like eight or nine years old and having that like everybody knew who you were and what you did. And then you get all the way until like you're 17, eight year, 18 years old and you yep. essentially face your first resistance in a sense of like somebody saying, well, it almost felt like you were kind of describing it like you, t you even said it like you took it for granted, essentially, like what you were doing. You didn't prepare enough for your own words. And I think sometimes when we've been doing or we've been getting a lot of wins, like even in myself, and I used to do it a lot more in the past. And because of that, like I don't do it now, but when I'd got like a lot of wins in a row, I used to be like, oh, I'm all right. Like I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. Like, okay, I can kind of maybe chill out for a second. And you just kind of expect the next thing you do to be a win and the next thing you do to be a win. And me, I was kind of putting in less and less effort and kind of getting lucky that I was still getting the same result. So that can only go on for so long. And yours was similar in that sense. And then I'm sure, obviously, with your successes, you know, after that, that you've learned from that. And then same with me, like I almost like with money and with like things that I'm doing, I have this like perpetual scarcity mindset. Like right. I will get these wins and I'm like, I'm literally in fear that I'm going to lose this money, that I'm going to lose this job, that I'm going to lose this podcast, that I'm not going to be able to put out the podcast's number that I want a week. So because of that, like sometimes it's a little obsessive, but I think I do an okay job with it. But because of that mentality, I like to think that I ensure that I won't get in another position where I get, I get lax and that I lose what I have. But because of that, and it kind of sounds like what you were doing and it like, it just drives home the point that this resistance in our life that we experience are not necessarily a bad thing. Like they help keep us in check and where we don't get comfortable and that we always stay on top of what we really want to do. It's very important to be the author of your own narrative, right? So it's, it's very important to keep the hunger like you're talking about to kind of keep yeah, some of go. that. Scarcity. So for me as an artist, there's been times in my career where things went great. Like there was, um, uh, one point, which I had, uh, my art was on the cover of an international magazine in England. I had a, a product launch inter uh, internationally that had my artwork in all like supermarkets everywhere. I had all these things. I was like touring with like rock stars. All these things were going on at the same <laughs> time. And there was a time where I started like resting on my laurels a little bit like, oh, everything I do is just going to be awesome. And I started yeah. to see some decline in like how I was pushing myself mm -hmm. and some of, the, mm -hmm. some of the work took some extra effort to really raise the bar. Um, you could probably use the other analogy about lowering the bar. It's like, you know, when you're doing limbo as a kid, I remember like being at going to parties and you do the limbo. It's like you're constantly just because you're comfortable at this level, mm -hmm. you have to constantly mm -hmm. create new hunger and new challenges for yourself. And I think that it's good to have the scarcity. It's good to have that hunger, but it's also equally important to celebrate the victories. Yeah. If you're every time you're, you're doing something like you're creating a podcast or you're a dad or you're doing all these things that you're accomplishing, you serve in the military. It's great to have the hunger of like, I want to hit these benchmarks for my podcast and raw, like do all these things. <laughs> I want to be an amazing dad. And all right, great. But it's also important to kind of take a step back and be in the present moment mm -hmm. and be like, you know what? I just did this podcast for this long. I deserve like a break. Yeah. I need to, I'm going to crack open a beer. I'm going to go on a yeah, trip. Man. I'm going to buy myself something. I'm going to yeah. do something. Especially being a dad, it like I think being a dad can force you into being completely present where you are more present than you've ever felt in your life. Mm -hmm. And it also at times when you're stressed out can put you completely out of presence where you're stressed out, your daughter needs something, you have to change a diaper, you're being pulled in 50 different ways, you're stressed <laughs> about your podcast and your work. Yeah. And so like it's really up to you how you take these variables in your life and what you do with them. And that's 
my job as an artist is to take these globs of paint and decide how I want to structure the pieces and the, and the, the hues and the pigments into something that makes sense that someone else can identify with and someone else can benefit from. Hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting to me. The, uh, everything that you said is interesting, but very much so the thing that you ended on is uh, relating you being an artist to taking the gloves of paint and rearranging them. And it's like, you said all those things like, and you use my examples. Thank you. Cause it like, it's so relevant to me or whoever is listening. Like you're doing all of these things in your lives. And it's like, you have to figure out the best way to rearrange the things in your life to get the benefit out of it. Like it's hard. I'm working a day job podcast. Uh, want to be a good parent, want to be a good uh, husband, right? All of these things that most of us have a lot of, like what I'm explaining and what you've explained for yourself is not like a unique one out of a million thing. Like there's a lot of people working two jobs, three jobs, single parents, like, holy shit, do I have a newfound respect for single parents out there? If you're listening, like you blow my mind. I will never forget how hard like it is gotta be. So props to you. And we just have to rearrange like time management is kind of what that says to me is I'm good at time management, but I need to be better. And I think if I spend more time on rearranging those things, then I will have a better output. And one of the other things that you said that I really like that I need to get better at is celebrating those victories, celebrating those successes and like actually like leaning back and just relishing in the moment, crack open a beer, share some ice cream with your wife or something. We love celebrating with ice cream and beer and like just relaxing and, and enjoying those moments because like we're, we're living our lives, right? Like it's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're, please. Sorry. I was just going to say like being a, being a uh, person that served in the armed forces. I mean, that's so much of our heritage as Americans is based on <laughs> celebrating victory, right? Like, could sure. you imagine like winning a war or, having a great victory and just being like, Oh, that was cool. Next. Like there's, it's, it's important to have <laughs> yeah. the victory. It's important to have the celebration. It's important to put things in your calendar. Like I started my podcast on this day when I reach one year mark or whatever, yeah. I'm going to celebrate. Yeah. Deserve. You no. Know, and like, if you don't show gratitude, if you don't have abundance, you're not going to keep getting successes because you're, you're going to tell the universe or God or whatever it is that you believe in that eh, it doesn't matter. You mm -hmm. have to always be like, you know what? It does matter. And like, you have to keep some of the magic alive. I talk to so many musicians on like my podcast and I know I've been friends with so many artists and musicians personally. Mm -hmm. And it's it always like kind of like puts a stake in my heart when I go to like uh, a concert. I went to a music festival a couple years back. I was like backstage with, I, don't know, I forgot who, Donovan or 311 or someone. And I brought a couple of my friends that were professional musicians that, that were touring and very uh, talented. And I was there with them. I looked over at my one friend's face and he looks at the show and he's like, yeah, like he has that kind of face, sure. like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, are you enjoying yourself? Are you okay afterwards? And he was like, yeah, you know, I just, I really can't enjoy shows anymore because I'm, I'm picking apart the performance and I'm looking at them, you know, I'm hearing the chords, how they're playing the notes and I'm picking it all apart. And like, wow. if the, the lesson to learn is it's really important to keep a hold on the magic, you know, like, especially as a parent and an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. some things you're, you're going to take things for granted, like your, your work or, or your family. You might take it for granted, but it's important to be like, you know what? Like Christoph from five years ago would have fucking flipped his lid to be where you are now. Yes, right? and then, this is true. Uh, like some of the things I'm writing about <laughs> in my book, like imagine yourself as like 95 year old Christoph, like gray and around your, your, you know, uh, rocking chair. And like, imagine you could time travel back to right now when your daughter is young. Like these moments are very golden and should be like appreciated and celebrated, you know? Mm. Yeah, I'm just like stopping for those listening. I like close my eyes and I actually am envisioning old me looking back and now even having this conversation with you like that's incredible. I, I I just want everybody else to maybe pause the podcast and try that as well because I think it's really important. That's like part of what we were kind of touching on before is like living in the moment and then relishing those uh, successes, victories and just being a parent, being more there. Like I also thought of like being a good, in a the relationship with your spouse or whomever that you, you know you're sharing your life with like being a better you for them not just you but also for them and all that stuff is so important being a better father a mother brother sister whomever so that isn't just like keeping hold of the magic because you're right like i think sometimes i'm like almost expectant that i'm just going to have another guest and another guest or a podcast and again i'm relating it to me relate it to whatever you want but what in your life are you just kind of expecting and it doesn't have the magic it does before because i know it was so hard for the first 
eight, 10, 12 months to even get a guest, like almost a year. Right. And so when I'd get a guest, I'd be like, yes. And then now I'm just like, all right, good. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's what's, who's the next guest. I gotta, I gotta get the next guest on here and like, slow down, man. Like yeah. what, wh- maybe ask yourself the question, like, why did you start even, or like you were saying, I like the parenting one. Cause it relates to both of us. Like, why did you choose to, if you did choose, if you didn't choose also still like, why do you love being a parent? But for me, like we wanted to be parents and we had a hard, frankly, we had a hard time becoming parents, um, sure. you know, and so I know we tried really hard to do that and we, we, I know why we wanted to do that. So when she's screaming, it could be so easy to forget that. Or when life gets tough, when your job gets tough, being an entrepreneur in your case gets tough or whatever you're doing, it gets tough. It's, it's hard to remember the magic. And I think that's, it's just something we have to remind ourselves. I mean, I have this whiteboard here. I'm probably going to write it on here after we're done and just look at every day because I think like, okay, that's great. We're having this conversation. And this is one thing I talk about a lot on my solo podcasts. And I always finish with like, it's great. Like, thank you for listening. And like, thanks for listening to Jay and I, but are you going to move on from this and actually apply it? Like, are you actually going to try to keep a hold of the magic and apply that to your life and, and be a better, whatever we just said and live your life to the fullest? Because it's all in great to like, to learn. And that's, it's so cliche. And I, it's so true to learning is half the battle. Like application is a must if you want growth. And I fully subscribe to that. So I think that's one of the best things I've heard in a long time. Wasn't that that the uh, GI Joe motto? Was it? Which one? Knowing is half the battle. Oh man. The cartoon GI Joe. That was before your time. You're 31, but the cartoon (laughs) from like, I don't know. It was like eighties or nineties or something. It was GI Joe. It was like, I, I dabbled in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. I dabbled in the eighties for like two and a half years. Jay, come on. <laughs> all <right>. Dating myself. <laughs> That's okay. Oh my God. It's all good. And, uh, I, I want to like move into all the things we just talked about. Um, kind of, it just, I'm all about helping people. Like I, I kind of uh, noted that earlier where I selfishly want to do the podcast for myself. I love learning from people like yourself, but I wanted to capture that. Like you wanted to do that as well with you and your wife and capturing those conversations and you want to help other people. I, there's like no feeling like somebody writes you a DM or, or however they get a hold of you an email and they're like, I really enjoyed that episode when you guys talked about this. And it just, it just brings a huge smile to my face, but you're also uh, into philanthropy. And I know um, in your home state of New Jersey, where I was actually born in Trenton. So I spent some good time there. Yeah, I've jumped around this, the, the country so much, but I was actually born in Jersey. So I spent a lot of time in Seaside Heights growing up on the in the in the the whole boardwalk and all that Jersey Shore stuff that got a flip turned upside down when reality TV hit. But I'm just <laughs> without getting too far off track here, like it's just cool to see like how much um how, how much you cared for your homestead and for how much you've been involved with them. And I just kinda wanted to talk about like what's I always like asking the question like we can learn for ourselves and that's like great like that you subscribe to a growth mindset for yourself but like what i like seeing like what separates people from stopping like in that circle and then like pushing out of that bubble into another bubble and wanting to actually share that information with other people and share that knowledge Mm -hmm. with other people and help other people so like what is there something that maybe you experienced in your life or that's just who you are that you wanted to help people become a philanthropist and like even like on the scale of having a podcast and interviewing other people? Well, I think one of the things I wrote about my, like my eight year old essay was that I wanted to help people. And I yeah. think in, in doing, in writing my book, I had to do a lot of uh, deep diving into my history and mm-hmm. why and how I did things. And I think it probably goes back to the fact that I grew up with a bipolar mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom has a really horrible, you know, mental illness and um, she has Crohn's disease and, and lots of physical and mental ailments. So growing up, I constantly saw her in the hospital for one thing or another and saw her suffering and her, you know, there was a lot of suffering in my family. My grandparents were uh, Holocaust survivors and wow. uh, my mom's brother died um, uh, really horribly in the 60s. So there was a lot of like darkness and stuff that kind of followed, you know, growing up, I kind of heard about it and saw things. So I think that I always wanted to do whatever I could to help my mother. Yeah. And at point you realize you can't help people that don't want to or are not capable of helping themselves Mm -hmm. so i think i that started out with a a want and a desire to help her and then also research and learn about psychology and about how our mind works and about how love can help um 
to apply to my own life. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's only um, natural when you explore those topics to want to share it with others and see what you can do to help other people. And so once, um, you know, once I had the opportunity with my artwork to donate art or to do art or to do things with my career that could help people, it seemed like a very natural thing to do. I think career wise, one of the things I would recommend people that are listening to read was I read like decades ago, probably now was rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And he talks about the importance of tithing, like giving back 10% of everything you make. And at that point I didn't really have like a very spiritual life in, in like in the disciplined way of it. So I didn't understand, but I started learning about, you know, the secret and manifesting and law of attraction. And I started to see results. I was at one point uh, 60 or 70 grand in debt. And after I got into learning about, how the universe sort of works with reciprocation and good karma and those sorts of new agey yeah. crunchy granola. <laughs> I started quantitative measurable results. I got out of debt in a year and a half. My career took off. Wow. Lots of things happened that were beyond coincidence. And so I've had the opportunity to become an ambassador for like organizations like wow. surf aid, which is an international organization to help impoverished uh, areas where surfing is, is prevalent. So I've been working with them for quite a long time. Uh, at one point, I was living in Florida with my wife during Hurricane Sandy and being about a thousand miles away from my home state of New Jersey when I saw devastation going on. I, it was you know, horrible to see that mm-hmm. um, at a long distance and not be there for your friends and family. I had friends that lost their homes. Wow. And so I immediately said, what, what can I do? And so I, I designed uh, some apparel, a shirt and a hoodie, and I donated 100% back. And within like awesome. a week or two, I was able to raise and donate 100%, which came out to about $15,000. Nice. That's that I awesome. Don't. So I think the lesson here is that everyone has something, right? So mm-hmm. if you're a mechanic, you can probably help someone fix their car for free. If you're an artist, maybe you can donate artwork. If you are a nurturing soul, maybe you can help someone that's sick. Everyone has some ability or some resource that they're abundant in, whether it's a talent or whether it's money or all the above. And I feel like it's our it's our duty, both spiritually and as humans, to kind of give back where you are abundant in. And so that's sort of been my my mission, I suppose. Yeah, it's just like much of the things that we've talked about. It started at a young age with you. And it's so cool that as a child, you even wanted to help your parent. And I think most children probably would. But the fact that it resonated so deeply with you that you kept on throughout your life to continue to do things like that. And that's what, again, as a parent, makes me realize like, how impactful things are that happen to your children, especially like, you know, we have relatively young kids. I have a very young child. Like I'm very concerned about like what she sees and hears. Yeah. I mean, you should be concerned, but it's also, you know, don't get lost in like the, um, don't get lost in the hoopla, right? If you turn yeah. on the TV, you're going to find lots of reasons to be scared, to be sure. paranoid, to be worried and mad and angry and all those different emotions. I made a conscious decision, which I challenge anyone to do. Uh, actually one one year and one month ago, or maybe a little longer, I, I decided to like cut cable TV off, cut off oh, wow. um, news rather. Not, if I haven't had cable in like a decade and a half, but news, I mean, <laughs> I just cut off completely. I stopped reading the news, stopped watching the news. I stopped <laughs> commenting on Facebook about the news because really no one's mind is going to get changed. You generally are only going to get more mad and angry no matter what side you're on. Mm. If you're on the left, <laughs> right, in the middle, whatever side you're on, you're going to generally talk about this nonsense of your side with people that believe the exact same thing. They're going to get mad at everyone else Mm -hmm. to, in reality, we're on the same team. Like we're supposed to be on the team of, if you're listening in America, you're on the American team, right? If you're in another country, you're on that team. And like politics is like somehow morphed into like a team sport where like anything our team does is great. Anything your team does sucks. And it's, it's nonsense. And I think by being fearful for your daughter, it's natural, but it, there's also so much evidence of beauty and love and, and hope and great things also. It's again, what do you do with your globs of paint? Do you make something that's beautiful or do you paint like uh, someone, you know, that's turning into a skeleton locked up in a closet that's dark and evil? It's up to you what you paint with your life and with your daughter and how she sees the world is going to be reflective on how you and your wife, what you show her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of good points there, but I, I do absolutely love that with not being afraid of the world, but embracing it. And we talked about that earlier with even wanting to bring children into this world. So I think that's a good point there. And I've done the same exact thing with news. I don't watch the TV. I don't like the whole Facebook, social media, like getting you talk about politics. Like you said, you're essentially just going to solidify your own opinion even more in the opinions already of the people that agree with you. So that can be a dangerous um, thing to do. So I don't. 
I don't do that whatsoever, but I do want to back up one second when you said um, we were talking about helping people and helping your mom and the people and what, how you're getting to philanthropy and all that stuff. And I, one of the things I really liked you said that I wanted to highlight was that you said help how you can. So whether you're an artist or whether like me, I'm a podcaster. I mean, I have a day job, but I can't really help people with what I do there. So I come home, I like talking and I like, what's that? What is your day job? So I'll keep it really general, but I work in IT, so I hack at a computer all day. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure there are some some ways I could do it, but do I necessarily enjoy that? Especially, I'll, I'll digress. Do I enjoy that as much as I do podcasting and talking to people? Absolutely not. So I'd much rather capture these conversations and share this um, and for free. Clearly, you're listening to it for free, and I you don't ever hear ads in these things. So um, I, I really like that. I wanted to point that out. And one of the other things I wanted to to kind of go all the way back to the beginning before we get out of here is when yeah. we were talking about your career and you said something about not having a plan B and how that's almost a blessing that you may not know what to do. And, and I think your conversation 85 or 86, so I, I can't, I'm trying to remember, but the point is, is I've talked to a lot of people and I think you probably the first person that I've talked to that said, like, view it as a blessing, because even in my own life, I've like, I feel like I should know this shit by now. Like I'm in my thirties, like I've lived a decent amount of time. I should really, and I, I kind of do, I'm figuring it out for sure. But I think sometimes we get frustrated with like, oh, I'm never going to get that mentality. Oh, I'm never going to figure it out. So I think if you apply what Jay said all the way back in the beginning of the conversation is like, look at as a blessing, like you can do anything you want for the most part. So sure. I, I just wanted to highlight that. I think that was really cool. I don't see why we have to, we have this like crazy desire to figure everything out. It's like, it's, it almost sounds like a Jerry Seinfeld, like skit just yeah. by saying, like, yeah. you gotta figure it out. I don't know. Like there's no figuring it out. Like mm -hmm. you, you, that's mm -hmm. how boring would that be if you just yeah. figured it out? Yeah. Then what? The <laughs> rest of my life. It's just like, it's nonsense. Like even me being an artist, like I've dedicated my whole life to it. But like if something else calls to me, and I want to change completely pivot next week. Who the fuck cares? Right. Yeah, like why sure. limit yourself? Like you're never going to figure it out. Once you do figure it out, you're going to be bored as shit. Yeah. And you're going to want to do something different. So like, it's about the journey. You're not going to care on your deathbed. Like I figured it out really great. <laughs> like, it's stupid. Yeah, man. Just have fun. I it's love about that. In the process. It's not about like, I figured it out, check it off and you're done. That's, that's stupid. Yeah. So no. like, give yourself like, a lot more, uh, leeway on figuring things out. Just spend time with your daughter and your wife. Have fun with your work. And I was just re reading some interview or uh, an article, and they were talking about how um, people that are well fed don't worry about passion, mm. right? So maybe that's backwards. Anyway, it was about <laughs> like if you're if you're doing. I'm sorry. If you're really if you're well fed, you do worry about passion because you can afford it. People that are hungry mm. don't worry about it. They just work. You have to just work. And like. We all worry about I want to be find passion and I want to do what I love and blah and that's great but like sometimes you have to just work and pay the bills and like contribute to in any way you can and I wouldn't worry about figuring it out because you're gonna just wind up reinventing yourself after that. Yeah, it reminds me. I, I love that and it reminds me of what I always say in the podcast and say to myself because I have to because I have some of that that wiring in my head that you just mentioned there and I say like sure. when I get to that hopefully I live a long and healthy life. And I get there and I just want to be, if it's, if I, it's my 95th birthday or however I'm all that, I want to wake up and I want to learn something new. And I always want to be evolving and learning something new and doing, cause it's like, like you said, like, oh gosh, how, how bad would that be? Okay. I figured it out. I was 30, 31 years old or whatever. And now, now what, you're just going to continue to do the same thing for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So that's why I want to constantly evolve. And I've even, I had a podcast entitled, uh, I never want to retire. And it's like, it was the same mentality of if mm. I want to retire, then like, uh, that sounds so boring to me. Like I want to, if I could podcast until I was 95, how freaking sweet would that be? You know, like that'd be badass. So that's a super great point. And I'm also super upset that, um, our time has come to an end and it's just flown by. And I know we could turn this into like 60, 90 minutes easily, Jay. And I'm, I'm just so uh, blessed and thankful that we did this podcast and I'm very thankful for your time. I really appreciate it. Where can everybody find you if they want to see your artwork, talk to you, your podcast, all the good stuff? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And I, I would love to talk to you again or talk more. Yeah. But, um, let's keep it off, off podcast. But yeah, for people that are interested in what I do or want to connect with me, uh, my website is jayalders.com. I am pretty much a social media horse. You can find me on any <laughs> social media. Look up 
J- at Jay Alders, you'll, you'll find me. My podcast is Shifting Perceptions Podcast. And um, you can go on shiftingperceptionspodcast.com or just go on any podcast player. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm writing a book that's being close to being done. So I, nice. I wish I could give an official plug for that. Uh, but just, you know, stay tuned. I'm excited to get that out in the world. Yeah, you just let me know. We can add it to the show notes later. But you'll be able to check out all that stuff in the show notes that Jay just listed. All right, Jay, like I said, I really do appreciate it. And man, thank you. It was, it was awesome. I enjoyed my time with you. Have a great rest of your night. It was great, man. Thanks, Christoph. See ya. 